Uh, my name is Ed Humphrey. I serve as the president of the board this year. Uh, on my right is David Painter, the vice chair of the board, and David Eubel will be here shortly. We welcome you to the public hearing on the proposed additional license uh, fee tax uh, for the BMV. Uh, this is the first of two required public hearings in accordance with Ohio Revised Code 4504-.24. Uh, we have a court <coughs> reporter here present, so when you speak, please give your name and address and speak clearly and one at a time. Uh, if you have not already done so, please sign in. We do need to catch your name and address for the record. And... Uh, during the hearing, residents will be given an opportunity to express objections or endorsement of the proposed additional uh, tax, $5 license plate fee. Uh, prior to the taking of public comment, we will ask Pat Monger, our county engineer, to uh, give a presentation to give an overview here. Go for it. All right, go for it. Oh, we need a pledge? There you go. Okay. Doesn't everyone just, uh, you know, sure. stand Especially by. after the election? No yes, we'll stand. do the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. It's over here. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This meeting is here. Sorry, I've got things out of order. Thank you, Commissioner Humphrey. I, um, as he mentioned, I am Pat Munger. I'm the Claremont County Engineer. I'm here to uh, give uh, an update to uh, the registration permissive fee and, um, of course, answer any, any questions that might come up. Uh, the board, uh, some of this presentation may look um, a little familiar. It's uh, an adaptation of, of, of the presentation I made back in March. Uh, we added a few uh, few extra details and um, some, some uh, historical numbers and whatnot, but uh, we'll work through it. So, so um, before we get into the, you know, the meat of the, of the presentation, uh, I think it would be helpful to just give a little bit of background um, relative to the permissive fee uh, last year, uh, it circulated through the House and, and uh, ultimately was passed. It was part of House Bill 26, which was known as the State Transportation Bill. Uh, it took effect last June, uh, which allowed the counties, obviously, to authorize an additional $5 uh, license um, tax on the registration of motor vehicles. And that's what we're going through the process today uh, and next week to have all the needed and necessary meetings and discussions so that um, ultimately the board could um, make a decision whether to move forward or not. Again, some little background relative to the operation of my, my office. Uh, these are summaries of the two revenue streams that we have at the engineer's office. Um, the, the, the one on the right is the gas tax and currently the State gas tax is 28 cents. Um, the last time that was increased, you can see, under, uh, was back in 05. Um, so um, 13 years ago, we uh, had, had the gas tax increase. And, and of note relative to gas tax, it is then collected statewide and then distributed to each of the 88 counties. So all 88 county engineers, we get the same amount of money from the gas tax total there. So last year, every county engineer got $2.3 million uh, from that revenue stream that was collected at the state level. Uh, the license portion of it, the license tax, um, that's a little different. Uh, the last time we had any increase to, to that, and that's more of a local county uh, revenue stream, uh, the last increase to the license fees were, was back in 2001. And uh, unlike the gas tax, we don't share that with any other counties. Um, all of those registrations are collected, or all of those uh, registrations that are uh, made here 
residents in Claremont County are then collected and those monies are distributed back to Claremont County. Uh, and you can see the split there, it's roughly 75% license fees and 25% gas tax is kind of how the, the operation runs and it's, it's right around $10 million between those two uh, revenue sources. So I wanted to again give you a little bit of um, some little, I mean we could go back till essentially the beginning of time with, with revenues and expenses from the county, but I thought well what would be um, at least a, a, a relative term was the last time we had any kind of increase. So, and so we went back to 05, which was the last time we saw uh, an uptick in gas tax. And so what you see in this graph are the two sources, uh, the license fees that are collected on the annual basis are denoted in blue up there at the top, and then the gas tax revenues are denoted in the, in the orange, uh, kind of the burnt orange color there on the bottom. Um, we've highlighted some numbers we didn't it gets the map gets or the uh, graph gets a little busy if we put numbers all the way across. But essentially, what we've got on the top is revenues ranging from 6.4 million back in 05 to 7.2 million, which was last year's. And what you would see is um, the increase was around $800,000, but that was over a 13-year period of time. So if you average, average those costs out or those revenues out, then we're looking at just under 1% a year for those um, 13 years. And we did a similar calculation there on the bottom with the gas tax. Um, again, the gas tax has been pretty flat, um, and that one is, is uh, averaging about 1% per year um, over those, over those 13, 13 years. So then we compare that as those um, expenses or those revenues, those revenue streams to um, a major source of expense that we have at the engineer's office is with maintaining our uh, nearly 400 miles of road. And we looked at the same time frame from 2005 up to 2007. Um, and again, comparing those numbers. So the cost of asphalt asphalt per mile um, back in 05 was a little over $50,000 a mile and, and in current time frames were over 100000 So that cost of asphalt um, has over more than doubled during this time frame that we're talking about, yet our revenues are at basically flat or you know nearly flat levels, 1%, uh, just under 1%. Uh, whereas this particular cost is averaging over 8% per year, um, not 8% not total, 8% a year. So 8%, 8%, 8%, 8%. So it's um, more than doubled over the, over the time frame. Um, one of the things that we've, again, um, they teach, um, they taught me a lot in engineering school, not a whole lot um, about um, business, and so I, I don't purport to be a, a, a major businessman here, but pretty much basic math tells me if I cannot control my revenue streams, then I better control my expenses. And so one of the things that we've done over the years, and we just took payroll as an example because it's a big ticket item uh, relative to the operation um, of the engineer's office and those costs, again, we, we looked at them from 05 to current time frames. And you can see that there's an increase uh, over that 13 year period of time, but it's, but it's very, very modest. It's a 1.6% uh, increase per year over that time frame. And mainly the way we've done it is through attrition. Um, from what I, I don't know, um, you know, again, uh, something that I saw with budgets and revenue streams years and years ago. I took over in 2003 and I, you know, it was very easy to see that if you can't control your revenues, you better, you better control your expenses. And so as people retired, 
um, they weren't they weren't replaced. And so since I took over in 03, we're down. Or the the engineer's office has 10 less staff people, and that's essentially the way we've been able to to deal with it. So to say that we've tightened the belt and we've gotten as 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 mean and lean as we can get. Um, maybe not me physically, but um, the operation certainly is mean and lean. Um, it's hard to argue that 1.6% per year increase in your total payroll numbers uh, over that 13-year period of time um, is, is, in my opinion, a pretty, 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 pretty solid effort on our part to do as much as we can do physically with, with the uh, public revenues that we're uh, entrusted to, to uh, maintain the county road system with. So what would we do? Um, first of all, we'd jump up and clap and be real happy for, for uh, a long time. But um, the main thing we, we were looking at is obviously our road. When you go back and you look at these costs of rising materials, um, we're, we're doing, it's just, it's a vicious cycle. And we've been in this cycle for a number of years. And the longer we stay in this cycle, the worse it gets, because every year we, far, we fall further and further behind with our paving program and maintaining our roads. So the additional revenue would be used to fund the road improvement program. Uh, we wouldn't be, you know, obviously it's, it's not, it's not going to be payroll. Um, it's, we're, we're, we're sticking 100% into the road program. We have, to, we have to maintain over 400 miles of road, and this, this additional $5 per registration will generate approximately a million dollars. And so that million dollars would go directly into our paving program, our, our road improvement program, and allow us to get a little bit better handle on our life cycle relative to our roads. Currently, we're at, a, we're at nearly a 38-year um, life cycle in terms of paving, uh, paving roads. Um, industry standard, if anybody is um, familiar with it, uh, is, is, is you know, less than half of that. You know, we, we should be in a 10 to 12. When I first took over, that's where we were. Uh, because we had, you know, the million and a half or 1.3 million, I think, is our average dollars that we've spent out of the MBNG on road resurfacing during my tenure. But that time frame allowed us to do, or that, that dollar amount allowed us to do, you know, 25 to 35 miles of road. We're down, down to, you know, 8, 9, 10 miles. Um, and the longer we do that, the worse the road gets. So when we do finally get around to repairing the road or repaving the road, it's not just a little resurfacing. We have to go a lot of deeper. Um, and so adding this $5 to the registrations will allow us to bring in the critical revenue that we need um, to uh, maintain our roads. Um, sort of next steps here, uh, obviously we have a couple presentations, public meetings that we need to, uh, to ha have and, and have an open discussion uh, about the, uh, the, 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 the uh, proposed um, increase. Um, uh, once we would get through those, I would uh, present a resolution to the board to, uh, you know, to take action on it um, and assuming that that uh, happened. Again, I'm not pre, you know, predetermining anything. This is this is why we're here tonight. But these are just physically the next steps that we need to take. Uh, after that, then the resolution. If if that um, resolution was uh, passed by the board, uh, there's a 30-day period at which it's subject to a referendum. Um, and should that then uh, time frame expire, uh, we would then uh, take the necessary. Uh, certified copies of the resolution up to Columbus to the appropriate uh, department up there and we, we would need to do that before the uh, uh, 1st of July in order for this to be effective um, at the 1st of uh, January of 19. And so if, if, it would, if, it, if we miss it by a day or two, then it's a whole nother year. Uh, we essentially lose that million dollar revenue to, uh, that we so badly need to maintain our roads. And with that. OK. Pat, two questions. Uh, one, you talked about the 38-year life cycle. This million dollars, as approved, if approved, 
uh, what will that drop? What kind of a reduction in that life cycle? We'll go from 38 years we, to... We, we're, we're expecting it to be cut in half. Okay. Yeah, because we're at about, a, like Over I said... Over time, though, it won't happen the next year. No, exactly. I mean, we would then be on a, a, a program that would be more like, you know, 20 years, 18 to 20 year program versus the 38, which is nearly 40. So we're expecting it to cut it in half. Because we're, we're, we're essentially taking, you know, right now, the last five years we've averaged about 1.3 million out of MVNG to, to fund the, reefs, the road program. This would infuse another million dollars. It's, it's not quite doubling it, but it's, it's pretty close. So. And then the other thing is as far as it applying to license fees, motorized vehicles only? Yes. Okay. Yes. Currently, yes, they would have. Um, here's the exact terminology. Yeah, it's passenger, um, passenger vehicle registrations. Okay. Yep. Not trucks. Well, trucks considered be a. Okay. Yeah. So not commercial. Not so it'd be no trailers. Yeah, just a, uh, so basically cars, minivans, SUVs, pickup trucks, but not your semis. If That's they're, a whole if they're different... licensed as a truck, it doesn't apply. If they're licensed as a vehicle, as a passenger, passenger vehicle, vehicle, correct, then, that applies. then it applies. Okay. Yeah. So a truck licensed as a truck isn't, but a right, truck a big, big tr a commercial a truck. Passenger. Yeah, but like even FedEx. A pickup truck can be licensed as a truck, right. But Right. It costs a whole lot per year more right. to license a pickup truck as a truck. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. I okay. just wanted to clarify this. Sure. I know there's been a lot of questions about that. Uh, I feel a lot of questions about people wanting to know if it was applied to trailers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We have time now for public comment. Anyone? I think we'll go through this uh, op opposition and. Then we'll go four. Uh, so anyone in opposition or that we'll go opposition four and then general comments. How's that? Anybody opposed to it that would like to speak? Okay. Oh, ask questions first. Go right ahead. I'm sorry. No. Questions? Okay. Okay. Very good. My name is Tamara Brockman, I live on Sugar Camp Road in Milford. I have several issues with this. You're asking non-commercial people to pay the brunt of this tax on our licenses. There are more commercial vehicles on the roads every day, and I don't feel that this is fair to the taxpayers. I also don't feel that this is fair to people who are driving and paying a gasoline tax when there are people driving hybrids and electric vehicles who are not paying this tax. They're not paying their share of the gasoline tax. They should be asked to pay more in their registration tax than I'm being asked to contribute. And another problem is, is once the camel gets its nose under the tent with this fee, what's to say it's not going to be $10 the next time or $15? We register five vehicles in our home. This is going to be a big hit. And I just don't feel that this is fair or well considered. And I think we need to look elsewhere for this revenue. Thank you. Let me answer your question. One of the questions, yes. which was, uh, how will it? Be? It's five now. Will it be ten or fifteen? Mm -hmm. And uh, the five was authorized by the state legislature, the House and Senate, and we're just deciding. We're county commissioners mm -hmm. are trying to decide whether to allow that to move forward or to stop it. So okay. well, when's the last uh, time it would you take the state legislature. It's not at a county level. It would take the state legislature to add anything beyond this. And it's been a long time since they've added anything. Well, when's the last time you saw a tax removed? Edition. I'm sorry. When's the last time you saw a tax removed? Other uh, than our income tax reduction recently. Yep. I'm, you know, every time we go to register a vehicle at Motor Vehicles now, they charge a $3.50 Per transaction fee, per vehicle, yep. we're already paying the clerk to sit there, and it's one transaction. I'm writing one check, but we're clipped. We're getting nickel and dime to death when we register our vehicles. I understand. And I'm tired of it, and I think that it needs to stop. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
Anyone else? Yeah. My name is Frank Brand from Ohio Township, uh, 2928 Mount Fisgaroo. This thing, uh, it's unfortunate none of the state lawmakers are here tonight to, to stand up to this thing they put in. I'm sure they were aware of it. Uh, this is just a county. Now, Pat, I've got what you're given for a, a, a mile of asphalt, $109,000. We're not paying that much in the township for it. I think we're doing a mile on Fagan Run this year for $76,000. So I don't know. Uh, it seems to be a big difference. And uh, I agree with you that the cost is doubled, but I can't find the cost. In, in 2004 and 2005, we were paying about $35,000 a mile. Now we're paying about seventy-two or $3,000 a mile. So I got a little problem with that. Another problem is vehicle registration. Um, I got more than double amount of traffic in my neighborhood in the last 10 years, 12 years, maybe three times as much. And I know it's not local traffic, but it seems like there's a lot more vehicles everywhere you go in the county. Now I understand the gas gets split up with all the counties in the state, so we're not going to gain as much through the gas as we would, but through license plates, I figure we should be, I don't know why this is flat. We got a lot more people in this county now. Dave keeps track of that kind of stuff. He can look it up, how many people we got as opposed to how many we had in 2004 or five. We, I think we got a lot more and a lot more registered drivers. So I don't, I can't understand why that license fee is flat. It should be, it should be a lot more than what it is. You see what you understand? I, I, those are the numbers straight okay. from the state. I just, I, I question those numbers. Well, they're straight they came from, from the county. Uh, but here, here's another thing. Yeah. What you're getting this $5 for is going to be for the county. Villages and townships, as well as the state, have the same problem you have. We all have that same problem. Now, are the legislators going to pass the thing where the townships can add $5 if you want to? Uh, are the legislators going to add, where the village can add $5? We need the money. They're going to say, well, you gave it to the county. Why don't you give it to the townships and the villages? So I question well, how many times we're going to get hit with this thing. I, I, um, the county doesn't qualify for local government fund money, do they? That, that's all. That was taken away. You got, we could use that in general fund money, you know what I'm saying? We lost 25% in 2013. We lost another 25% in 2014. Uh, if we needed to use some extra for the roads, we could have done it. You guys didn't lose that. You didn't have it, so you didn't lose it. We did. There's a lot of things that we've lost. We, we lost GLF too. Yeah. General, or right. We, we did. Well, you could use it in your general fund money. Yes. Right. Um, I, I hear there's... I've heard that quite possibly the state is no longer going to pay for the paving of roads through villages. That supposedly is in the works. My and if that's the case, the villages can't afford, a village like Amelia can't afford to pay a million dollars to pave 125 through Amelia, if, if that comes to be true, and I, I've heard there's a, a good chance there is. Um, these kind of things concern me. Um, the state state has a problem. They don't work. They need money. Can, they can just raise the tax fees. I don't, I don't have a problem with what the county's doing. I don't have a problem with Pat wanting this money. I got a problem with the lawmakers that aren't here to pass House Bill 26. They're supposed to be conservative. That's not conservative to me. And the other thing is, trailers are not affected. That helps me a little bit. I got a problem with bicycles. Why aren't they licensed? We got little narrow country roads and these guys ride bicycles. And I, they wave you around and you can't even see over the top what's coming and they get irritated. We, I got to give them three feet and I'll be at a stop sign and they'll pull right up alongside of me. Now if I do that to them, they can get my license number. I ain't got a license number to get on these guys. And they're using the road. 
And, and they got more rights than I do. I have to yield to them. They don't yield to me. I got a problem with that. Across the street from the courthouse and the jail and, and the uh, um, sheriff's office, there was a big vacant piece of ground I heard was purchased by the county. I hear that's earmarked for a new engineer complex. There's going to be a lot of money spent there. It won't uh, come out of this money. Hmm? It won't come out of this money. We have it's going to come out of my money somewhere. We have separate <laughs> capital. I understand that. Yep. But I mean, you can, you can keep these in different funds. I understand how that works. What I'm saying is it's still taxpayer money, and this yes. is still an increase in taxes, and I'm, I'm opposed to increase in taxes. Um, our, our traffic is cut through traffic. We have a lot of cut, 749 is a terrible road. It's closed half the time because some trucks turned over with gravel or corn or something. We have these trucks using that road. We have an awful amount of accidents. Um, the reason they're doing it is trying to get away from the mess that's been created on 125 and 32. Those aren't our residents. Our roads don't have, is any of this money going to be used to play, widen some of these roads and to, and to put berms down? Mount Pisgah doesn't have a berm anywhere. When you go off there, you're gone. That's the plan, Frank. Well, you didn't mention berms and widening. Well, it's a road improvement program. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, if, if it happens, <coughs> I got one more thing. And I called... They had an upgrade on Mount Pisgah Road when they replaced the bridge down there at the bottom. Shortly after they replaced it, at the end of the box culvert, it started sinking in, and I called. They said, we'll look at it, and we'll get back to you. That, I don't know if they looked at it, but they, I know they didn't get back to me. And a couple of months later, I called again. In Ohio Town, it's in Pierce Township. The Ohio Township maintenance man <coughs> went down there and looked at it and marked real clear. White painted white lines on both sides. I brought it up at our township meeting and our trustees, two of our trustees said they called. I don't think anybody's ever got back. And then I heard today, well, somebody might have got back and said it was okay. Well, it's not okay. And it should have been handled. The county didn't put the bridge in. They paid it some a contractor to put it in. That contractor should have been bonded. That should have been fixed right away. That bond's probably long, long gone now. It, now we got to put up with it. it. It's not. It's not. It's not getting better. It's getting worse. I got one more thing, and this is for Mr. McGraw. You're a Union Township. I'm sure you guys are paving. Are you paying $109 a mile for a road? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to speak? Yep. Please come forward. State your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Kyle Hewling. I am a uh, resident of Pierce Township, and uh, I happen to work here in Milford at the BMV. Um, just a heads up on uh, everything on this. I'm quite aware of House Bill 26 as it also affected the deputy registrars. Uh, deputy registrars and the agencies, uh, those of you who may not know, we're not actually state or government employees of any kind. Uh, they're independent uh, small business owners who operate the BNB and issue driver's licenses, uh, vehicle registrations on behalf of the state of Ohio. The BNB itself is the state. So, um, and you had mentioned the, the $3.50 debt fee fee. Um, yeah, that does go to the debt fee. It pays for the utilities, pays for... Right, right. It, do, it does pay our salaries as well. That's the only part that doesn't go to a government. Which, honestly, with that, I, I don't really have an issue. The vehicle registrations are broken down into three spots. There's the deputy three, which is $3.50. Part of House Bill 26 had, uh, uh, gave the registrar for the uh, BMB 
uh, the authorization to raise that debt fee uh, to up to $5.25. And despite the uh, deputy registrars wanting that fee increase, because you know everything has gone up, uh, the registrar voted that down. So there is no fee increase on the deputy fees. So the registrar is a state? Yes. Uh, okay. As opposed to the BMV that's local, small business. The, each agency you go to, whether it's the one here in Milford, Batavia, Loveland, or anywhere in Ohio, none of the BMVs are state. I know. I, I, right, I, I right. And I, I've seen you in there many, many times yep, at our agency. Yep. Um, so... The way that the fees are broken down for a vehicle registration, you have the state fee, which is $31 for a passenger vehicle in Ohio. Uh, not for, for a non-commercial truck, but for a passenger vehicle for a car. Then you have the $3.50 fee, which is the deputy fee. And then you have the permissive tax, which depending on your county and township and municipality that you live in, uh, is anywhere from zero to $20 right now. Um, most of Claremont County is either $15 or $20. I believe most of the southeastern parts, the, the rural areas, are $15. Uh, and most of the bigger area, the western portion of Claremont County, is $20. Um, at this point, uh, you're suggesting that we raise it to $5. Uh, that's just the $5 going from $20 to $25 and then from $15 to $20, correct? You're not going from $15 to $25. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll be quite honest, and I'm, I'm not just saying this not because, you know, the deputies didn't get the three, their fee increase that we've needed. I'm saying this, you know, as a taxpayer here in Claremont County as well. I, I honestly don't think this is a good idea. I think there's uh, probably some other way that we can go through this. I, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but if we're able to get by at the BMV, I'm sure that you guys can do that as well. I, I do believe our roads need a little help, but honestly, I don't believe this is the way to go. So that's what I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, sir. I, well, we'll go not sure about whether I'm opposed or not, and we'll then go to people that are for it if there are any. All right, thank you. My name is John McGraw. Uh, my address is 4604 Blainfield. That's Batavia, Ohio, 45103. Uh, full disclosure, I am a Union Township trustee, so I came tonight to, to uh, see the presentation and also hear the comments. Um, our trustee board has been asked to... Uh, vote on a, uh, it's on our agenda for tomorrow night to either approve or disapprove of the plan and uh, we'll know by tomorrow night how that turns out. But um, there was a question before that you had about the cost. Um, your number is, is a good number if you're just talking about paving. Uh, I know in our township um, there's a lot of base repairs that have to be done too uh, along with that. And that includes curbs, gutters, sewers, uh, sometimes sidewalks, and even driveways. In, in some cases, if it's a if it's damaged, you know, public roadway. So, the the whole cost of the project. And Mr. Monger, maybe you can comment. But sometimes a project isn't just paving. There's a lot more to it to get the road back up to the the, the speed. So that that number can vary in between seventy two thousand a mile to. Uh, over a hundred thousand a mile, depending on how much work has to be done. Um, is is that a fair comment? Yeah, that was the point I was trying to make um, earlier in terms of the life cycle. The further behind we get, the the deeper the repairs are needed and necessary. So it's to put it in say perspective of maybe your home. You know, you if if you let your you know don't make the needed and necessary repairs to the roof instead of just making some shingles repairs which would be likened to a resurfacing project. Now you're talking about tearing the whole roof off, getting right down to the base of the roof, and then going back up with it. So um, that's the problem that we're seeing now is that, you know, the, the it's not just a resurfacing, it's a more or less a restoration of the whole road. Now you're getting into the foundations of the road and the base repairs, 
and those costs um, are not going down. You know, and that's and that's the that's sort of the delta that we see. Because I've seen in, in some townships where they're trying to uh, just pave over old pavement, and in some cases uh, there was a township that has concrete curb and gutter, and they were just going to pave all the way over to the edge and not even fix the curbs and not change the pavement. So, and I've seen streets that they did that in Union Township way in the past, and I see how bad they are now because the the asphalt will break off that concrete and then go down the sewers, and then now you got clogged sewers. Um, the um, Muirfield area in our area has that problem, and they're on our paving schedule for um, next year. Um, but so in Union Township, we will strip it down to the base and do the base repairs, and then put new asphalt down. We still need to base repair, though. That's essentially what we're seeing. Do, do we all get the same amount of money per bottle? Um, we get, based on how many bottles you have, is that much money? Townships do, right. Do you, do you come under that same guideline? No, it's a it's a pretty complicated distribution. Um, we can we can try to well, talk it through, but it's pretty complicated. Just, we don't have to do that much restoration, that much repair, and all that. Uh, I think we're I do, though. I think we're riding it this year. I figured in there. Uh, I, know, I know what, what John's talking about, curbs, gutters, sewers, all that. It gets very complicated. We don't have any of that. And any county roads that you do for us aren't going to have any. What you might have is you might have some places where the road is deteriorated because um, that's a blessing. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I, I believe our township is in a similar position that the county's in where we're probably doing a third or, or maybe sometimes half of what we should be doing to keep up long term. And that's not a good program to be under. And it is a difficult decision to make. You only have so much money and you have to decide what to do, what roads to fix. And um, I understand that and so people understand the $5 fee is set by the state legislature, so you don't have any control if it's 5 or 10 or if it was 1. Um, and the fact that trucks aren't charged, with commercial trucks, that was decided by the legislature too. That's how the law was written. And I would like to see commercial vehicles also pay the fee, but in fairness to commercial vehicles, because I work for a firm that has commercial vehicles, they pay a lot in road use taxes based on their fuel. Uh, it's a lot of money that the commercial trucks do have to pay. We have to record every mile in that sector and then there's a road tax. But that goes to the federal government and where it goes from there, I don't know. So that's another discussion. But um, honestly, it, I see the, the fee on the license plate as a user fee because the cars are definitely driving on the roads. And it, it, to me, it's a fair system because it's pay to play. Now, if you don't own a car and you ride just buses or something and maybe in a larger city, um, you know, you, you, you may have some arguments in larger cities where this is maybe not fair, but um, in, a, in a county like ours where most people drive and there's not a lot of public transportation, it's, I see it as a user fee because everybody's driving on the roads. And I want to see the roads get uh, repaired quicker and better. And, you know, it wouldn't be fair for me to say, don't do it when I send you emails all the time. Can you fix these potholes? Can you f help us with this road? And, uh, and you do a great job of trying to respond. So it's, but I know you're under constraints of, of budgetary problems and uh, those kind of things. So it makes it difficult. So, and I understand, you know, the side of the residents too, where you know it's more money out of your pocket. Um, and but I, I think we have to do something about our roads, our highways, our streets, statewide, nationwide. Um, we're letting our infrastructure crumble, and there's bridges. To also, that's a whole different subject. Uh, culverts, bridges, all those kind of things too. So, um, but I just want to clear up that your figure when you say 100 over 100,000, that includes some other repairs beyond just asphalt. Sure. Because, and then the, the only other thing I have a concern with, and I believe you were going to address it somehow, the commissioners were, is to, you said that the money would go towards roads and not other things uh, like a, a new truck or some kind of payroll or something. Is there something built into the way you're going to do your resolution that'll 
say this is set aside for asphalt and repairs? Is that that's the only other question I had? But thank you for your time. Okay. Anyone else would like to speak to us tonight? He only has two sources, yeah, <laughs> gasoline and, right. and registration. So. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. God talked about you know, what they had to do in the New Testament. I'm going to speak for all the people south of 125. We always feel like we're getting short end of the state. Just a, uh, a, 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 um, just a couple things I heard. I just want to give some background information. Relative to the current state of affairs with uh, the county, um, so you essentially have with the when you do your registration, you have you're, you're essentially paying two fees. There's a license fee, which is thirty four dollars and fifty cents. So of that thirty four dollars and fifty cents, twenty of it goes to the county, eleven dollars goes to the state highway patrol, and three dollars and fifty cents stays at the with the registrar. So that's the thirty-four fifty. That's what they call the uh, uh, license license tax license fee. Then you have a permissive, which you touched on, which uh, the legislature over the years has allowed the counties and the municipalities and the townships to put on different levels. Currently, the county has there's three of those that are in place. The last one was put in in two thousand one, seventeen years ago. So the county has 15. The townships have the ability to put on five, and so do the municipalities. So that would take you from to to either you know to twenty dollars. So of the municipalities in Claremont County, ten of them have that their five dollars put on place. So Amelia has it, Loveland, Milford. Um, I'm sorry, ten of them. There's only, there's only three that have it on. Ten of them don't. So Amelia, Loveland, and Milford are the only municipalities that have their $5 put in place. On the township side of the equation, um, Franklin has it, Goshen, Jackson, Miami, Pierce, Stone Lake, Union, and Wayne. So that's uh, eight, I believe, that have it in place. Currently, that law is on the books those 10 municipalities could come tomorrow and do it through their you know through their process they wouldn't need any legislative fix you know to do that um and then the townships could do the same thing so i just wanted to point that out that uh, of the 34 dollars and 50 cents the 20 20 of it goes to the county and it gets distributed it's a pretty complicated um process but it's it it, it depends on whether that the, municip the register is a, in the city or not, and if, they, if the city has it in place or not, uh, the money goes different places. Um, as far as the asphalt prices and things like that, I think we kind of covered that. I heard you say a couple, or ask a couple questions, Frank, and so I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to answer those. Um, the, uh, as far as the additional $5, um, those are the jurisdictions that have it in place uh, or could have it in place uh, that, that have chosen not to. Um, again, I, you know, um, I would love a, a different scenario um, because, you know, some of the points that you make about the hybrids and the uh, more, I mean, cars are just more fuel efficient this day. So the model that we currently have, some would say it's broken because when you look at, I know that when I made the presentation in March, we looked at a 10-year period of time, and then and when you looked at uh, revenues in 07 to 17 and gas tax, they were physically down. It was about $30,000. So I don't know, you know, in terms of running your household or running your business, a small business, uh, I mean, we're talking about 1% increases in revenues for long periods of time, decades. 
And we've been able to, you know, hold things together uh, through attrition, but that's it. We're, we're, at, we're, at, we're at critical mass right now. There are no more efficiencies to be made. Um, there's, there's a lot of work that needs to happen throughout the county, not just in resurfacing. We chose the resurfacing, but we are dedicating all of these revenues to that. Um, the only way we can get a handle on these uh, life cycles is to is to put more money at it because it, the roads aren't getting better by themselves. They're uh, they're deteriorating at a at an exponential rate. And if we don't intervene and do something, then the the the, the it's going to go from thirty years to forty years to fit. I mean, it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. So I I think those were essentially the questions that were asked uh, relative to fees and what we would do with it and other things. So if there's other questions that need to be um, clarified, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Pat, could you just go back through real quick the townships that have uh, oh, yeah. instituted that $5 tax? Eight of, eight of 16. I believe it was. Let's see. Well, that's not it. Uh, the townships that have instituted is are Franklin, Goshen, Jackson, Miami, Pierce, Stonelick, Union, and Wayne. And then uh, that's eight. And then there's uh, there's only three municipalities. That would be Amelia, Loveland, and Milford. Milford. So, <laughs> anybody, anybody else would like to uh, comment for or against? We appreciate you being here tonight. Thanks for your comments that we have received. And we have two more sessions coming up. Mr. Painter. <clears throat> Pat, just one more thing. Sure. Could you take a look at that spot on that bridge on Mount Pisgah Road? I believe we have, but I will, Thank you. I will double, double check that one. We have two more sessions coming up. One is a special session of the Board of Commissioners on this topic, May the 14th at 7 o'clock at New Richmond Elementary, I, I'm sorry, New Richmond Exempted Village School Board Education Office, located at 212 North Market Street in New Richmond. And then we have another session like tonight uh, at 7 o'clock on the 15th, the next day afterwards, the Village of Batavia Armory. 65 North 2nd Street, Batavia, and you're welcome to join us there if you'd like to. That concludes our public session for tonight, I believe. Is there anything else we need to do? Tom, we're we good? We are good. Gene? Okay, that concludes our meeting. Thanks for coming. <laughs>